So, hi! I decided I wanted to record a little tarot spread for Scorpio season, which is starting uh, today, when this email lands with you. Uh, if you didn't get this on email, then it starts, I think, on the 23rd of October. And I don't know why Scorpio season in particular... I just felt like, yeah, I'm going to explain myself. When do I ever? <laughs> so I'm recording on my laptop here, and I'm also recording for some kind of B-roll vibes on my phone over there. So if I look like this occasionally, that's why I'm just giving <laughs> the camera a little, hey, hey, girl. <laughs> so the way that I do tarot, if you haven't uh, ever experienced my tarot work before, then the way that I do it is I still very much refer to the book that comes along with this tarot set. Um, I don't like to go in with any preconceived ideas about what any of the cards mean or what the messages are about. So I just literally pull the cards. Ooh, energy shifting. And then we refer to the book. I will read you what it says in the book and then I will channel um, and put together the pieces if there are any pieces to connect. So here we go. Um, as I'm doing this shuffle, I'm just going to tell you that um, if you receive this in the email, and in fact, if you're seeing this on YouTube or wherever you're seeing it, I'm going to provide you with a link to join a, a taster event of my offering called Luna Vortex. So Luna Vortex is uh, it's kind of an energy work subscription, effectively, which how fucking cool is that, by the way? <laughs> like, I wish this had existed when I started my business. Um, and you can just come and join me twice a month. We tend to, I called it Luna Vortex because I wanted to work with the energies of the moon. And when I first started it, it was kind of really intentionally about that. Now it's kind of evolved into something that's even bigger and beyond that. But we still schedule the calls around the new and the full moon. And we would just use the, the lunar cycles to really help us to amplify the energies that we're clearing. So it's a really beautiful space. There isn't a Facebook group or anything with it. It's literally just two calls a month and then you get access to the replays and like the whole vault of all of the replays that have been done previously. You get access to that as soon as you join. So, uh, I mean, we've been going now for a year. So when I open the doors again to Lunar Vortex, we'll have been going for a full year. And um, that will mean that you have around 24 hours worth of content already when you sign up. So it's like, yeah, it's fucking epic. <laughs> right, let me just check this. I just want to check that this, this camera is clean. So bear with me. I'll just give it a little rub with my T-shirt. <laughs> so professional. Let me just rub it with my T-shirt probably won't edit that out why would I it's it's, it's all me <laughs> the full Noli experience <laughs> right let's do the thing so what's in store for us Scorpio season just show me whatever needs to be shown oh here we go um so Oh, yes, that's right. One final thing about the so I'm going to be putting a link here to the Lunar Vortex experience, and that is going to be a one day free event, not free event. It's not free. I keep saying it's free because I used to do free events leading into Lunar Vortex. But then I just really noticed for myself that doing energy, any kind of energy work um, for free without any financial investment or buy-in from people, I start to find it so fucking draining. Um, so if you want to take part in the Lunar Vortex experience, there will be a small charge. It is not going to be a massive investment, but it's just that little, that little exchange, that little, yes, I'm in, that little commitment from you that you're going to opt in and truly take part because I don't put these events on just for the good of my health. Um, they carry value in and of themselves. And so, yeah, if you want to just come and do the experience, you can. And then if you want to, if you enjoy it, you're welcome to then come and join Luna Vortex when the doors open. So that's how that's going to work. Yeah, it's an adjustment. Like I know it's been something I've 
been feeling for a while actually so I share this with you because six line life I know when I share my process um, it often inspires other people so if you've been feeling that there is something uh, like a boundary or a standard in your business or your life and you're like actually I think I'm done with doing things that way and I'm gonna do them a different way to honor my energy do it right so if you want to come and join the Lunar Vortex experience, there is going to be a small charge for that, a small investment. Um, so take a look in the link and you'll see what that investment is. And then what's going to happen is, should you then choose to come and join Lunar Vortex, the investment you make in the Lunar Vortex experience, the taster session, you then get a coupon which will allow you to have that deducted from your investment in Lunar Vortex. So it all comes around in the end. <laughs> and of course, if you just want to do the experience, then you're totally 100% fucking welcome to join us just for the experience. But I feel like with Lunar Vortex, it's just this, um, they both in this, uh, it's this kind of environment and, and this offering that it's very difficult for me to explain and to convey how how valuable it is, how powerful it is, and how special it is as a container, um, just with words or even with content or whatever. So I really want to give people the opportunity to have an experience of what it's like to be in that container. Um, yeah, just so you know, you can get a taste because it is, yeah, it's fucking magical. <laughs> so let's get into it. Our first card for Scorpio season is Son of Cups. And let's get some information about this. Ooh, schnoz. Okay, Son of Cups, artistic introspective. Like all of the Cups family, the son truly excels within the arts. He's usually a musician or a visual artist of some kind, and he finds success within his field. His natural tendency to look inward adds to his charm and mystique. To others, he may seem secretive and even peaceful, while deep inside he carries a dark kernel of intensity. Hmm. It feels to me that that could actually be symbolic of us uh, as, as an individual. This could be, uh, this could symbolize someone else in your life, a male figure, or it could actually just be the part of you that is kind of that intense, artistic, creative soul. Um, so let's see where it takes us. And particularly when you think about Scorpio, Scorpio is like the dark, watery, the depths. So there is a lot of artistic energy in Scorpio season. So I'm wondering whether or not this is really a call to honor your natural instinct to become introspective and to create just for the sake of creating, create for yourself, create for how it feels viscerally to just be in your full expression of self. And don't worry if people don't understand, right? That feels like quite important. Don't worry if people, don't worry if you feel like people won't understand you. It's really by honoring your intensity, honoring your creativity, honoring your expression. That is what is going to have you felt that is what's going to have you understood, even though you might not understand logically how those pieces connect. When you honor your intensity, honor your creativity, mm, magical things happen. So then we have the two of pentacles. And as we reveal more cards, it's always interesting how they kind of start to piece together. So the two of pentacles, again here and for you guys up there. The two of pentacles signifies inevitable change. Woo. Since the pentacles suit relates to earthly possessions, this usually means a new job or financial situation or a move. Even if you fear this change, it needs to happen and might even be fun. Face it with the grace of a newly formed butterfly, a world of possibilities balanced upon your delicate wings. Mm. I love this. So when we think about the intensity of the Son of Cups, and then we think about this kind of, this abundance vibe that the pentacles bring. Pentacles are about earthly possessions. They are about abundance usually. So when we start to think about your creativity through the cups being brought into the kind of earthly realm of your physical abundance, 
when we start to honor this, when we start to honor our full self, our full intensity, our full creativity, effectively, it does create change. It does create avenues for abundance. But what can happen is we start to freak out. And we start to get in our heads about what is that change going to look like? What do I need to do? What do I need to let go of? What do I, you know, like what actions do I need to take? And we can get so up in our thinking mind and wanting to over plan and over process and know everything, control everything that we forget. Like this is a butterfly. A butterfly is kind of to a certain extent at the whim of the currents of the air that it's, you know, it's flapping its wings, but it is light. It is, it doesn't have a lot of mass, right? Which, although we tend to think about butterflies in terms of transformation, which is what this card is speaking to in terms of change, but think about the journey of the butterfly. It has to go within, it has to go in. And what happens to the butterfly in that cocoon? It's fucking intense, that level of transformation. So when it emerges as the butterfly, it's shed so much of its previous identity. Like the butterfly literally changes from something that can that crawls on the ground that has like that is basically belly to the ground or belly to whatever it is that it's crawling up right it's very reliant on a surface on something solid right so where are you relying on something solid and not truly allowing yourself to grow your wings and be in your full expansion once we grow our wings we're able to fly we're able to you know travel much greater distances think about the caterpillar it's slow it's measured because it has to be. It's in the beginning stages of its life. But if you keep treating yourself like a fucking caterpillar for the rest of your life, you're never going to fly. You're never going to experience the transformation that is waiting for you when you just claim your fucking wings, right? Claim them. Claim your wings, people. <laughs> um, so what else is coming through about this? So this, to me, in this context speaks to like a leap of faith but I don't feel like leaps of faith actually have to be as scary as people seem to think they do a leap of faith doesn't actually have to be leaping into something that you are not prepared for very often a leap of faith is actually something that you've been wanting to do for a while it's something that you know intuitively instinctively your gut like you know that this is the move for you but there's just fear, there's been caution, there's been wanting to have a solid foundation, wanting to cling to the caterpillar and make sure you're safe and near the ground and that you can hide from predators. You don't want to like grow your wings and become this vibrant butterfly that could potentially be seen, you know, be seen, be adored. So just remember, when you are a butterfly, you are able to travel greater distances with a lot more ease. You are carried on the current of the wind, you are lighter. You embrace beauty. So just remember these pieces that yes, introspection is necessary and allow yourself to then claim your wings, become the fucking beautiful butterfly that you are here to be and fly, baby. Mm, yum. Okay, what's our final card that's come up here? Ah, interesting. Okay, so let me just feel into, so these two feel like they're very paired together, the Son of Cups and uh, the Two of Pentacles. I'm wondering if there's another card. Um, so I just want to feel into, like I can feel some energy moving here. So I want to feel into what, like the relevance, the placement of this third card. Mm. Mm. Okay, so... This card feels like, I don't want to say a warning. I want to say that these two cards together, right, are a very clear path. Allow yourself to be introspective, embrace your full self, embrace your creativity, embrace your intensity. And then this one, how cool was that? Boink. It's dexterous. Hi. Can't believe I had those reflexes. I'm so fucking proud of myself. <laughs> And then this card here being about taking the leap of faith. You know that you've done the work. You know you've laid the groundwork. You know you've studied yourself inside out. You've nurtured your creativity. And now it's time to claim your wings and fly. Take the leap. Do the thing that you know you've been wanting to do. Those are very clear. But we all know what tends to happen. We all know we get this. We hear a reading like this and we go, yes, I knew this. I knew this all along. This is my sign. 
And then, then da -da -da, sneaky little sabotage will come in. So here we have the seven of cups. Illusion and deception. So to me, this is like, what could sidetrack us? This is the path. <laughs> do, 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 do. And then this guy comes along and goes, Wah! and tries to take us off course. Ooh, there he is. <laughs> this guy comes along and tries to take us off course. That's the sense that I'm feeling around this card. So seven of cups, illusion, deception. The, sevens of, the seven of cups is not the most welcome card. It indicates you'll face temptation in many aspects of your life, whether it's cheating for pleasure or for, uh, or for money. You'll soon realize you've been building a house of cards. You may feel as though you can't see clearly, can't judge right from wrong or, uh, sorry, can't judge right from wrong or up from down. This is the spell of the seven of cups. It's best to remove yourself for a while, step back until you can see straight. So for me... This feels just like a clear indication of we know that this can happen. We know that we can get distracted. We know we can fall. This even feels like, you know, how, what's your normal sabotage? How do you normally cheat yourself is what I want to ask you. So when you're on the journey and you know, the thing is, we all think we want this, right? We all think we want a clear step-by-step, -step, go within, create, find out more about yourself, love your intensity yes you're gonna get all the things you want Claim, take the leap of faith yeah woo we think we want this reading but then our subconscious comes in and goes yeah but is it allowed to be that good am i allowed to be that happy am i allowed to be that free and it will start to throw distraction and illusion into your path so in my mind this card only really truly becomes relevant when you start to notice those sneaky little patterns that are coming up so in this before embarking on the journey towards this guy i would definitely take some time to contemplate meditate journal on how do i normally trip myself up what are my common sabotages so for me for example mine might be like i'll be on a really good run of you know, taking care of myself, being really creative, showing up for my business, showing up for my life, my fitness. And then I will fall into a pattern of maybe eating too much sugar. That's a big one for me. I've spoken to you guys about it before. It's like an obvious one. So I know that if I start to reach for sugary snacks, ah, that's a sign. That's a sign for me that I'm trying to sabotage. I'm trying to distract myself because honestly, when we still hold a thread inside of us that we don't deserve this, and this is familiar, right? Where am I cheating myself? Where do I cheat myself? Where do I steal myself away from the goal, right? Where do I trip myself up? And it can even be when things are starting to go really well. It's almost like sometimes our nervous system can trip us into this because this is more familiar. And sometimes it's more comfortable to us to actually be in problem solving mode, to be in, I'm in a struggle, I'm in a problem, let me find the solution. Because when we are hunting for a solution, when we are like hands in the clay of our life, doing things, making things happen, solving problems, we feel like we are in the illusion of control. That is an illusion. That is an illusion. Control is an illusion. So when you feel yourself becoming controlling, remember this bad boy and then refocus yourself on this. Come back to this, going within, being creative, allowing yourself to be intense and geek out on all the things that feel like exciting and like, oh, like you just get lost in them. Let this car draw you back into yourself. And then when you feel grounded and you feel full back up on who you are, then remember you have your wings. They are yours to claim. It is your time to claim them. And don't punish yourself if you slip into this energy. You're human. It's fine. It did, doesn't mean you failed. It doesn't mean that you made a mistake. It just means, oh, whoops, I fell back into that old pattern. Okay, cool. Let me just refocus myself so that I can remind myself that I already have everything I need. I already have my wings. All I have to do is claim them, step into that role and fucking fly. So that is what I have to say for you uh, for Scorpio season. I hope that resonated. Take it with you. Enjoy. 
And if you are interested in coming to join us in Lunar Vortex, we don't tend to do a lot of tarot reading, uh, but sometimes we do. So I just wanted to give you a taste of what it's like to be in that environment with me. <laughs> but when it comes to when it comes to the Lunar Vortex experience, if you'd like to join us, it will be around 60 to 90 minutes and it will be held on Zoom. It will be live and you will get access to the replay for a few days after. Then the replay will go into the Lunar Vortex vault. And when you sign up for Lunar Vortex, you'll have access to months and months of replays. We co we've covered so many things. We've covered things from far as like transformation. We've covered grief. We've covered sovereignty. We've covered um, things like loneliness, but we've also covered things like expansion and desire and how to manifest what you want. And each call we do, we start with a spoken transmission to kind of activate the space. I'll often drop you into your bodies with a little visualization or meditation. And then the themes for the clearing will come up. We've used emotional clearing. We've used um, emotional resonance clearing. We have used kinesiology and acupressure. We have <laughs> used EFT, of course. I've done various forms of kind of spoken transmissions and energy healing. So I never really know exactly what is going to come through on the call or what kind of clearing we're going to do. It's very much a co-creation. And you will always get an opportunity at the beginning to use the chat box to give me a check in, tell me where you are. And in my mind, what that's doing is it's allowing you to kind of pour a part of you forth into like the cauldron so that when I'm drawing on the collective field for the clearing, you're in there, your energy is in there, right? This group clearing work is so powerful and come and have a taster experience with us in the Lunar Vortex experience. The link is below or in the email that you got this in. So have an amazing Scorpio season and hopefully I'll see you in the Lunar Vortex experience. Bye-bye.